right in the yesterday session uh, we uh, learned how do we understand the clock related uh, things so what is the clock period for it a uh, kind of problems we have really sorted out and we also understood what is the cpu execution time through this formula we have solved a couple of problems also on that and i hope you understand what is clock rate what is cpu execution time how do we relate these two or how do we find out a uh, given two of these the third one all these are sorted out and i uh, gave you a program where i named a program by name sachin and one of you asked me a question like why the same program same rules are to be considered the question says that it is 1.2 times more than, than than this so that's the question so i hope i answered that as well then we went into the uh, formula on the calculation where we could find the cpu time by using the formula cpu clock cycle of a by clock rate we know what was the cpu time it was given as uh, 10 seconds and clock cycle we do not know we need to compute clock rate is nothing but the speed so we use the 4 gigahertz and we found out that 40 to 10 to the power of 9 is the answer for it by using this into 1.2 times we could compute for calculation that has to be done with b so b says that it needs to be done in 6 seconds and we use this 1.2 into the formula and we found out the clock rate finally this was one part of it and the second thing that we uh, calculated was uh, which kind of architecture is faster so uh, i have got one implementation i mean i have got a, a instruction set named x it can be implemented in the style a or style b i said but we have given the clock cycle time and we have given the cpa both are given for it and we need to now understand which one is faster we solved this yesterday and we found out which was faster using the simple formulas if the instruction set details are not given it's your luck and assume that it is z or x or y you do not have to worry about that because they have not told you the count of instruction and also how many instructions they did not tell you very clearly so just assume it as z it's it's not going to be a problem at all so make sure you calculate it right and then with the simple calculation of multiplying z into 2.0 into 250 z into 1.2 into 500 i got 600 and 500 uh, z ps and we know the formula for calculating the performance cpu performance a by performance b which means execution time b by a which gives you 1.2 in this case it was calculated and we understood it also i believe if you have any questions in this you can always ask me i'll be able to answer them as well now i'm going to the next set of problems we have got one more problem that we need to sort out and then we will go ahead with the next topic till now is it all clear for all of you all of you right we are getting into the next level uh, the problem is going to be slightly complex but it is not as complex it's easy only don't worry it's slightly uh, better than the previous one so what is cpa i told you what is it in the last class itself cpa is clock cycles per instruction remember cpa is clock cycle per instruction okay how do we calculate the clock cycle for instruction sir we can do it through proper simulation we have got tools like multi-sim i very lock kind of tools which we can use for simulating and we can find out how much is the clock cycle required per instruction but nevertheless it is not easy it is also complex and it is a field of study in fact to identify how to find out the clock cycles per instruction easily there are tools available though tools are available it is still rated complex now we are going to see a problem and we will understand how exactly we are going to sort out this and we will derive with the solution let's take a very simple point and remember that cpa is all about clock cycles per instruction cpa is clock cycles per instruction remember it now a designer has been given a challenge assume that you are the designer a designer has been given a challenge he has to choose between one of the two code sequences he has got code sequence x and y and he has to choose between one of these code sequences and he is provided with certain data they have just told that okay boss you have got two code sequences and you need to choose which one of the uh, two is best in terms of something and he is provided with some data also i did not tell you what are all the things that he has to compare to find out which is the best sequence i'll tell you that later don't worry but for now just understand that the designer has got a task where he has to identify which of these two is better in terms of something that in terms of something has to be conveyed later don't worry about that now the designer is given with cpa they have calculated the cpa and they gave the cpa for the instruction classes 
A, B and C. Whenever there is an instruction of class A runs, it needs 1. Whenever it is B, it is 2. Whenever it is C, it is 3. So this is the clue that they have given and they have told that you have got the CPI for the instruction classes A, B, C and CPI is 1, 2, 3 respectively for A, B and C. Whenever you get a class A instruction, it will need 1. Whenever you get class B, as I said, it is 2 and 3 for class C. Now, the code sequence is nothing but the number of instructions in the code is what is connected to code sequence. If I say code sequence, I need to tell you how many instructions are there. For an instance, I can tell you that I have got 5 instructions in this code. Why I can tell you I have got 6 instructions in this code? But given the question where they have clearly specified it is A, B and C classes which together form the code sequence, I have the responsibility to tell you out of these 5 how many are A, how many are B and how many are C. Do you understand the point? I have now told you that I have got an instruction sequence called X and another instruction sequence called Y. Now out of these two, I also understand that there are some instructions. Totally it has got 5 here as you can count and totally it has got 6 here as you can count. But I should clearly specify how many of them belong to category A, how many of them belong to category B and how many of them belong to category C. Now all this class A will need 1 clock cycle, class B will need 2 clock cycle, class C will need 3 clock cycle. That's the point. Similarly, for Y a sequence, I have got 4, 1 and 1 respectively. This is A, this is B, this is C. So, the first point here you need to understand is, you need to first understand how do we read the question. The question tells you that you have got two sequences and the question also hints you that the sequences have got instructions and the instructions belong to one of the three categories. We have got categories as A, B and C and their respective clock per, I mean CPA is also clock cycles per instruction is also specified. Now this is the data that they have given to you and they are yet to tell you the question. Which code sequence executes most instructions? First question. Which code sequence executes most number of instructions? Who will be faster? Which of these two will be faster is the second question. Find the CPA for X and Y. This is the third question. I need to now find out which one is going to give us most number of instructions, which one is going to be faster and CP for X and Y. That's it. The question is having three different branches to it. So understand the question clearly and then only you can go into the answer. Only these kind of questions will be there for high end, higher mark questions. When I have a higher mark evaluation question, I will go with only these kind of patterns. Right. We will start with the simplest of the procedure. I already told you that. The sequence 1 let it be taken. It has got 2 plus 1 plus 2. How sir? It is 2 plus 1 plus 2. Sequence 2 it has got, I mean sequence Y it has got 4 plus 1 plus 1. It has got 6 instructions. It has got 5 instructions. So which has got the minimum number of instructions? 5 is the bare minimum and 6 has got the maximum number of instructions. Right? So it is obvious that the sequence 1 executes minimum number of instructions or sequence 2 executes most number of instruction. The first part is answered right now. Let's go to the second one. I have a new formula for you. I am going to calculate the CPU clock cycle. You can see that it starts with the range i equal to 1 goes on till n and it is CPI i into CA. So let's understand what is CA. C is nothing but count of instructions of the particular class. CPI i is average number of cycles per instruction. The n is number of instruction classes. That's all. Let's not complicate too much. You can even forget this formula if you know how to compute and how to understand the given hints. I've given you a hint clearly here. These are all the hints that are available and the data that are available. So how do you find out the CPU clock cycles for sequence 1? I'm going to take 1 here. So how do you find it out? Very simple. 2 into 1. 2 into 1, 2 into 3. So 2 into 1, 1 into 2, 2 into 3. That means 2 plus 2 plus 6, which will get me 10 cycles, which means for the sequence 1 or X, as you call it in the question, it needs 10 cycles. Right? Now let's go to the second one. Let's clear the uh, 
annotations off on the board so that will be easier for us to track how do you calculate this let's go with this 4 into 1 1 into 2 1 into 3 so how much is that 4 plus 2 plus 3 totally 9 so for sequence 1 I need 10 cycles for sequence 2 I need 9 cycles now tell me which one is faster which one is faster? The sequence 2 needs 9, sequence 1 needs 10. The sequence 2 obviously is faster because it has got less number of cycles needed. Though it has got 6 instructions in picture, the inference is simple. It has got 6 instructions but still it needs only 9. It has got only 5 instructions but it needed 10 clock cycles. So this one is faster. This guy is like Shevag now. He has scored better. Now the final thing that we need to find out is CPI. What is CPI? CPU clock cycles by instruction count is what we need to find 10 by 5 to 9 by 6 1.5. That's all. You have found out everything that you are asked with and this is a very simple problem yet it has got a lot of uh, formulas to remember, a lot of things to remember in fact overall. So make sure you guys do not forget it. With this we complete the performance part of the problems. I'll give you some assignments, I'll give you some problems which are very important and which are uh, easy to solve as well. A little later I'll send you the questions through email to representative so that you can follow it up and that has to be done by yourself. If you have any questions, I can always answer that uh, during your discussion time or during your class whenever I allocate time for you. Do you have any queries till now? And this topic is very very interesting which is nothing but pipelining. Please understand one thing whenever computer architecture or whenever any interviews happen with respect to computer architecture one topic that will come as uninvited guest is pipelining i'm telling you that way it is so very important topic if you do not know pipelining you can say that you do not know computer architecture so this is going to be long for next 10 sessions i'll talk only pipelining it is going to be 10 to 15 sessions even i'll try to make it as important and as interesting as it can be I will try to do that to the best level possible but I will conduct 3 or 4 evaluations in this topic alone. It is very interesting, very important and very much needed for your future also. So make sure you guys listen to it carefully. Right? I hope you give the fullest support and the coordination and understanding all this. So please cooperate. Right? As I have put in the first slide itself, it is definitely not easy. Please understand, this is interesting but not easy. It has got a lot of catch in between and this won't be a cakewalk. This will definitely not be a cakewalk and we need to remember a lot of things. The entire pipelining path will be like this where I'll have multiple things in between. There will be multiple stages in between and all of them have to be remembered and only if you attend all the classes you will be able to understand that. So make sure you guys attend the classes regularly. Now the next point is how do we relate pipelining with some real time example? or how the concept of pipelining came into existence. It came into existence only through you and me because we have been doing lot of things only in the pipeline manner. I always say in the class, right, when I am talking something right now, I am talking about say, for example, what is pipelining now, but the next topic what I have to talk is already available in my brain and I know what to talk. So that is exactly called pipelining. I know what to be done next and it is all ready to be processed and it is in the queue. If I do not know that, I will have to prepare, I will have to wait, I will have to probably spend time in getting that and then I will have to talk to you. Before that you will get bored and you will leave the session. So for me to make sure that the session is lively and useful as well as uninterrupted, I need to make sure that I know what I will have to talk for the entire 40 minutes or 45 minutes duration. That's called pipelining. Let me give you a simple example. You are going for a buffet where first you have got the starter, next you have got for example chapati. Next you have got for example the biryanis or something and you have got the side dishes and finally you have got the desserts. Now you get a clear idea the moment you come here itself to understand that what are all the things that you need and what is the order in which it is kept. So you can take things appropriately. Okay I like starters very much so I will take a little bit more. I need one chapati I will take a bowl of rice actually and I will take bowl of uh, side dishes and I know what is here. So you can process it and this is called pipelining. You know what you have to do next. You get a clear idea of how many things are left out next to you. This is called pipelining. 
Why do we need to do it, sir? This will eventually not waste time. This will make sure that the processor work very fast. This will let the processor work really fast. And most important point is that you can handle multiple instructions at a time. Sir, how do you say so, sir? I'll take the similar buffet example right now. I have got five items served. You are here. The person next to you is here. The person next to him is here. And the next guy is here. When you take this, these people will wait. But when you move to here, this guy will come here and this guy can come here and wait and this guy will come to this place. So we eventually make sure that we are not wasting time of all the people and all these people are handled in parallel. When this guy comes over here, for an instance, I will show you that as well. When the first guy is in the last item being served, this is the first guy. So the second guy would be here, the third guy would be here, the fourth would be here and the fifth would be here. So, if you have not kept this way of pipelined buffet system there, it's going to be a problem. It will delay, it will make, or if you are serving only one person, it will make the rest of the people wait. If the server says that, I will serve only one person, and this guy has to complete all of this before the next guy comes in, the rest of the four people will really have to wait for a lot of time and they will lose interest in the food. So, what exactly is the target? The target is very simple. We need to make sure that we are getting the execution really faster, smoother, and it should serve all the ones who need the service. I'm going to have multiple components. I'm going to use all of them. I will let many people use my service. That's called pipelining for you. It's a technique which can make the processor run faster. It's a technique which can make the processor utilized faster. It's very simple. Sir, how many stages of pipelining are there, sir? How many people can come in the buffet? I have got four items available. So how many people can be there? It can be four, for an instance. I have got seven items. It can be seven. So the pipelining, there are different methods available and different varieties of pipelinings are being followed. And they are respectively three stage, five stage, seven stage, and nine stage is also in the market right now. We will stop with three and five. 7 itself is complex and 9 is very, very complex. We need to understand a little more on that. So I'll see if I can get you some documents and some sessions on 7 cycle, seven stage pipelining, but I'm not sure about it. I'll, I'll see if I can get you that sometime later during this part of session. So it can be 5, 3 or 7 or even 9 as I told you and each of them is called stages. What is 7? Seven? 7 means it has got 7 stages. An instruction has to go through the 7 stages for it to be completed for it to be executed from the time the instruction is called till the time the instruction is complete i have seven different stages which are working in between that's called seven stage pipelining remember it if i have only five stages in between from the start till the end i call it five stage pipelining that's it it's very 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 simple and it's it's one thing that you need to understand the flow when I start, I'll go in a very smooth flow from the left to right. And if you change even any one of them in between, you are in trouble. So make sure you don't try to change the flow because if you change, it is not going to help you. Let's go a bit deeper. I hope you understood what is pipelining with the simple example that I gave you. Let's go into the next uh, set of understanding and next thing that we need to learn. Let's take an example. Uh, how many of you wash cloths regularly? I do not know. If you wash it, that's great. If not, please wash it regularly. It's good for you and for others as well as I regularly tell you. Now, what is the step that we will normally follow to wash the cloths? Very simple. We will first collect the clothes which are to be washed. Then I will stack them into the washing machine. I'll open the door of washing machine. I will stack them. Then I'll switch on the washing machine. And once the washing is all done, I need to move the cloths to the dryer. Okay, sir, in India, we have not seen this, sir. Yes, in India, this is not the schemes that we follow here because we all have individual washing machines mostly available at our home, which is fully automatic as well. Most of us have it. But in US and in the Western countries, what they do is they have got a washing room in every apartment and there will be a washing machine separately. There will be a dryer. There will be iron. So all these will be available there. And this washing machine can take up to 30 kgs a load. So for $1, and this needs another half a dollar for drying it. And to utilize the iron service, you need to pay another half a dollar. So all these will be available in the washing room. And people will come here, load it here, and they go do their work. After one hour, they come back. They take it and they transfer it here, and they go out. After half an hour, they come back. 
they then come here and use it so now i have got a washing machine i have got a dryer i have got an iron and this washing machine when used by person 1 person 2 cannot use it this dryer when is being used by the person 1 after completion of the work person 2 is permitted to use it this is exactly called pipelining and this is how the real systems in western countries and in us they are working particularly for washing so what did we do now we do pipelining when one person is utilizing a particular box let the next person not stay idle or aloof let him also use the components that's what we are trying to convey now what do we do the first step is to collect the cloths in the washing machine the second step is to dry it the third step is to iron it and the fourth step is bye bye i have done my work remember it these are all the sequence let's take three people who wants to wash the cloth now let's assume that pipelining is not involved in the picture and pipelining is involved in the picture i am going to take all the scenarios out both the scenarios where pipelining is not involved and pipelining is involved let's see i am going to first say that there is no pipelining concept supported i am saying you that there is nothing no pipelining anything not supported so this man a will come he will take this washing machine he will put his money he will start washing he will wait once this is done he will move it to this then he will wait he will move it to this and he takes his box and he leaves once he leaves he tells his friend in the room that dude i have completed my work so this guy will come he will use it he will use it he will use it one after another and he finishes then he will call the next man and he will say that dude i am also done with it please take up the washing machine so he will take it and it will keep going now there is no pipelining enabled and how much time do we need for all of them very simple it's like this assuming that each stage needs 10 minutes of time the first person will need 10 minutes for him to complete the entire task the second person needs another i mean first person needs 30 minutes for completing the entire task second person needs another 30 third person needs another 30 so totally it is 90 minutes of time that we have to spend for using all these three components for all the three of them assuming there is no pipeline do you understand now let's go ahead with having pipelining what do we do with pipelining very simple the only thing that i'm going to do is i will first ask the man one to come i mean the person a to come he will wash while he is washing i will give him a call saying that dude i'm washing it right now in next few minutes it will be done so in 10 minutes once it is done this guy will come and he will take over the washing machine by then this man will go into the dryer now by then the dryer work is over for the first man the washing work could be over for the second man so the second man would call the third man right now saying that dude my work is over you can come and wash so this guy first guy will move to the third stage the second guy will move to the second stage and the third guy will move to the first stage so what is the time now required likewise if we move the total time required would be only 50 minutes we have saved around 40 minutes of time total time is saved remember the total time is saved sir how did you say 50 minutes sir 10 10 10 10 10 and then 10 that's all so by the end of the 50th minute we would have completed all the tasks it is just 50 minutes that we need towards completing the pipelining i mean towards completing the task with pipelining that's very simple and easy to understand example you can create a number of examples like that and there can be a question which can throw data at you which can ask you to identify what would be the time that is required for completing the task without pipelining and with pipelining you should be able to tell that clearly that's that that could be a traditional question but pipelining is not possible all the time pipelining is not possible all the time i'm telling you telling you that strongly you may ask me a question sir why sir you are saying it is very good it is possible only when you have all the resources as independent i need a separate washing machine an independent dryer an independent iron so without having these three independently i cannot dream of having the pipelining assuming that you have all these three in one component itself can i do pipelining no this one guy will be using all of this for entire 30 minutes and he has to complete it and then only he can hand over it to the next man so the point is pretty simple here 
pipelining doesn't come so easily it comes with the cost all the components and the elements inside the circuitry or the board should be all independent and once the usage is complete only then you can move it to the next level remember it for sequential usage for parallel usage we need to make sure that we have independent components parallel usage is the right time if you do not have independent units of washing unit dryer and iron it is not possible for us to get the pipelining implemented it's a very important point now the next point is to be understood what is it will the pipelining increase throughput what do you mean by throughput sir very simple total number of items covered in a particular unit time pipelining definitely increases throughput because when i do pipelining you can see that instead of getting the task done in 90 minutes i get the task done in 50 minutes which means that i am effectively saving another 40 minutes in that another set of clothes can be washed so it is going to effectively definitely increase the throughput the throughput is totally increased for sure but do we increase the efficiency is there any chance that we increase the efficiency in the entire cycle i mean do we decrease the time of execution time of execution is it coming down no it is all 10 minutes for each stage if you see this diagram again carefully this is 10 minutes this is 10 minutes this is 10 minutes 10 10 10 10 10 10 we did not reduce it even by one minute so the individual still has to spend 30 minutes but overall they have to spend together 50 minutes only so the throughput will be increased but the individual effort and the contribution will still remain the same there is going to be no major change in terms of the individual's contribution when you compare it with pipelining or non pipeline effort both will remain the same only thing is you will get the throughput higher that's all that's the most important point that you need to remember so pipelining is meant to increase the efficiency for the team and not an individual if you consider cricket I will increase the efficiency. I am not going to talk about any individual's performance here. Pipelining will increase the efficiency on the whole and not for a single instruction. Remember it. With this, I complete the class for today. Tomorrow, we will 